Hello, it's wonderful to get together with you. Shannon is uh, putting together another e-newsletter and asked me to join her again in our uh, ongoing journey with Our Lady, um, Sister Wisdom. A phenomenal woman who uh, fills the church and the world and all traditions with the depth, reality, and the certainty that we learn most things by living, living them, living with each other in the midst of coming to know. So it's uh, not putting aside our mental activity, but rather it's trusting more deeply our total human activity that would take us into knowing, and that would be wisdom, the depth and richness of being wise. It would be uh, the parallel no, not even more than that, the experience of, the God who is pure activity, love. And so wisdom would be, in some very real ways, pure activity, love. And yet, in its simplicity, it wants us to pause and let things come together. And so a little bit about when we talk about the four sisters of wisdom, solitude, simplicity, service, and silence. Today, simplicity um, raises her head and says, pick me. <laughs> so we'll take a little time with simplicity. Oftentimes in, in the Franciscan world and other worlds, simplicity in religious sense would take us to a sense of poverty and talking about being and living without with very little, with living a simple life. And what a um, honorable thing, not only honorable, virtuous, and indeed um, clearly worthy of the lifelong journey. We would say this would be Francis of Assisi. He lived a, 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 a um, heroically simple life. And before he was died, was extended out on the ground, naked, one with the earth, not displaying having nothing, but indicating that he was not without but with everything. At least that's my interpretation right now with you. In other words, this simplicity of simplicity <laughs> takes us into unity. Uh, the, the one who is active and alive uh, and fills the world with the dynamic of one's love. And this is our loving God. The one who is beyond our words and as Christians we know in many different ways. Uh, actually we do, uh, certainly the triune God, but rich other ways of languaging God as in the doxology. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The ongoingness of everything is here, arising now and forever in the one who is the one, who is one. Some of us are old enough, or maybe you enjoy theater and you would recall a beautiful show on Broadway years ago, but it began that way. It was absolutely an astounding, striking begin. One singular sensation. And of course, the, the abruptness of being born, the child crying, the, the alertness of coming into the world, the clearing our eyes when we wake in the morning. This is simplicity. This is the coming to being in a, an in, instant, we might say, in a moment, in, in less than that, in the now. One singular sensation. And that would be the embrace of love. That would be the experience of being created which takes us to that larger sense of what simplicity is and what poverty is, which takes us into this notion and experience of abundance. Now, <laughs> how can you talk about many when you're talking about one? You know, let's get it down, let's bring down, clean out the house, clear out your back. I mean, I need to do that, maybe many of you wish to too as well, and it's true. But the, the abundance we're talking about isn't litter. It's not having lots of stuff around that we needn't have nor is it acquiring things we need to have. And so there's much we need to share. And it's from abundance that we're able to do that. The first abundance we experience and we know is the naked Lord Jesus, who in his dying pours out love for us. Yes, forgiveness, yes, redemption, all of that in love, in the Father's love, the love of the Spirit that we'll be celebrating too in Pentecost. So this simple, singular, triune God 
as Christians would know, this God who emerges in many things, Hindus might say or others might understand, we have this incredible encounter with right now in this singular sensation of being here. That's the door and the window to a contemplation that at times might be obscure as these windows have been today with fog and mist, or it might be my heart because it's clouded for other reasons. Simplicity is not scarcity. In fact, there's a superabundance of God's grace in abiding with us now. And that's the promise of simplicity that in the poor sense of the poverty sense or the sense of the poor Christ and the poor Francis and Claire, what we give over all that we have, give ourselves away as best we might. We have mother, brother, sister, and everything given to us. Indeed, we would say it's all here right now and what rectifies our thinking is the love of God that I would miss seeing it now. That what I long for is present now. And this is the beauty of simplicity. It takes us to that radical sense of abundance of finding everything in the one, the one God who is radically simple. Who has always been. And always will be. You and I, as we, as I close this reflection with you, might just take our own time and in our own way to, uh, to, to uh, uh, treasure it. Um, it's, it's a different way of looking, I think, at simplicity, because we are materialistic in our way of noting these things. And we, we stay within the material or the many or the fabrication of things or the holding on to things. And uh, it's ironic that simplicity really comes from the giftedness of being. <laughs> the giftedness of being. The one singular sensation of having been made, created, life breathed into us. The singular moment of baptism. The reception of the Holy Eucharist, the breaking of bread with one another. The opening the word of God and the bounty that's there. The oneness of all of this. The breathing now. One, one might say, this is too much. This is too much. And I would say, yes. And probably when you and I say yes to the too much of the wonderful, we stand truly on the threshold of wisdom, arm in arm, with our sister simplicity.